Pete, let's go. Namaskara. Nanesu Somo. Today, we are having Navika 2021 Digital Conference. This is Cricket Samvada. Our guests are Shanta Rangaswamy and Sindhu Sriharsha. Before we start, let me introduce Shanta Rangaswamy. Shanta represented Karnataka in the ball badminton team twice in the early 70s when Karnataka emerged victorious on both occasions. She is the first captain of Karnataka softball team that they were runners up in the national championship in 1972. She was awarded Maharani Padmini Award for being the best all rounder. She was the first captain of Karnataka cricket team. She represented Karnataka women's cricket from 1973 to 1994, captaining the team on many occasions. She was the first captain of the Indian cricket team. She was the first captain to record a test victory against West Indies. She was the first cricketer, women cricketer to score a century in test cricket. She is the first woman to be awarded prestigious Arjuna Award by the government of India in 1976. She is the recipient of state Dasara Award. She is the first recipient of Ekalavya Award for women's cricket award, awarded by the government of Karnataka. The same recipient of Karnataka Rajyasa Award from the government of Karnataka in 1997. First recipient of Life Achievement Award from the Board of Control of Cricket in India, Women's Cricket and Garden 19, 2015. She was the Chairman of Selection Committee of the Indian team from 2013 to 2016. Currently, she is the Chairman of Women's Committee of Selection Committee of Karnataka State Cricket Association. And also, in October 2019, she became the first Indian female cricketer to represent represent Indian Cricketers Association in the BCCI Apex Council. And she was also the first lady to get elected to the Apex Council in KCASC, which is Karnataka State Cricket Association. And she had to resign after she was elected to the Apex Council of the BCCI. So let's introduce ourselves. I, my name is Somo. I'm a Bengaluru cricket player. I'm a cricket player. Nano. 1974, Karnataka won the first Ranji Trophy. And I looked at it, I was very happy. I played with almost all the 16 people that represented Karnataka at that time. And Sudhakar Rao, Brijesh Patel, and Vijay Krishna, Vijay Krishna being the captain for the, my university, Bangalore University in Rohinton Barrier. And I also played cricket uh, for Vijaya Bank, which won a bunch of tournaments as well. So. Um, unfortunately, I did not go any further than that cricket. And uh, I still enjoy watching cricket. I still uh, participate in a lot of things. And now, even though we talk about cricket, current events, every Thursday from 6.30 to 7.30 each week. So let me hand it to Kashyap. Let him introduce himself. Hello, Namaskara. Nanesu Narayan Kashyap. Nan Los Angeles Karnataka, Bangalore and Mysore College eighteen years cricket Arti De Iga I mean Madlina Tumban and Northini, Iglo Tumba Northini, um Avaglo Tamasha Modoro, Eli Yari and any twenty two players anywhere on the ground, Yen Martidro North and T V any any two teams. So uh, very, very uh, crazy about uh, the cricket rules and laws and statistics and who did what and when. interested So we thought we'll, uh, you know, the, the cricket enthusiasts like Somo, myself, and Binay, and you know, friends, in the last uh, one and a half years, in the, we have started, uh, as Somo said, uh, cricket one and a We do a cricket harate program. Uh, we like to do it every week. Uh, sometimes not possible, of course. Um, 
ಸೊ ದೆನ್ ದಿಸ್ ವಾಸ್ ಅ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಆಪರ್ಚುನಿಟಿ ಇವಾಗ ನಾವಿಕಾಗೆ ಇಂಥ ಕ್ರಿಕೆಟ್ ದಿಗ್ಗಜರ ಜೊತೆ ಮಾತಾಡ್ಸೋದು ನಮ್ಮ ಭಾಗ್ಯ ಸೊ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಶಾಂತ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸಿಂಧು ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ನಿಮ್ಮ ಜೊತೆ ಇನ್ನೂ ತುಂಬ ಮಾತಾಡೋದಿದೆ ಬಟ್ ಕ್ರಿಕೆಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮೀ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಫು ನಾವು ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ಸ್ Okay, Vinay, what did you do yourself? Hi, everyone. My name is Vinay Somashekar. I am uh, Somu's son here. Um, also, you know, I was born and raised here in, in the U.S., actually. Um, and, uh, the, you know, my whole interest in cricket just kind of spawned from, you know, being my dad's son, I guess. And so um, always, you know, uh, watching on TV, going to India. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just kind of evolved over time. And um, I had the privilege of uh, playing some cricket uh, back in my university days. I uh, played at uh, University of California, Irvine for several years. And um, since then, just been a big fan of the sport and, you know, traveling around the world to try and catch as much cricket as I can to different World Cup events and things like that. And uh, participate with both uh, uh, Kashyap and my dad in this uh, kind of uh, cricket bana, like a uh, uh, program that we have every week. And uh, really a uh, good privilege to be here to, to, to speak to uh, both of our, um, you know, participants today in, in this interview. So thank you guys. Um, Kashyap, what did you take over and, uh, you know, uh, start the process? Sure. Uh, first one, general questions. Uh, I'll start with Shanta. Um, can you narrate any early struggles during domestic or any age level circuits, you know, before you made it big? Uh, and, you know, same question goes to Sindhu as well. Um, but, uh, you know, Shanta, if you can uh, tell us what, what were the early struggles, you know, especially, you know, um, I don't want to... mention it I mean, in, in, in the sense that you know but as a female i think it was a bit harder than a male cricketer but i'll, I'll leave it up to you I mean, what was the process of that early struggle in my entire uh, career was a struggle adashto kannada al maatadtini but mad madhya english chodre dai vich kamisbeku yeah well uh, when we started the uh, um, we we had to face a lot lot of uh, ridicule and the criticisms you know it's typical um, yeah. uh, that's because we were the pioneers you know uh, so since i belong to the the elite band of uh, pioneers we perhaps uh, uh, face more struggles than the, the subsequent generation sindhu and all ashtenilla now avargella reserve train e maadi kalistha idvi na when i by then when she was playing i was already uh, running the karnataka ladies cricket association so uh, but uh, we invariably traveled on reserve second class trains because um can, reservations were tough we, and whenever there was national championships it used to be a knockout ಸೊ ಯಾವಾಗ ಸೋಲ್ತೀವೋ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಡೇ ಹೊರಡ್ತಾ ಇರ್ಬೇಕು ಪಟ್ಟಣಕ್ಕೆ ಕಟ್ಟೆ ಬೆಂಟ್ ಕಟ್ಕೊಂಡು ಹೊರಡೋದೆ ಆಗಿತ್ತು ಆದ್ರಿಂದ ರಿಸರ್ವೇಶನ್ಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಟಫ್ ಬಟ್ ನನಗೆ ಸ್ಟ್ರಗಲ್ಕಿಂತ ಅದೆಲ್ಲ ಐ ಫೀಲ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಜರ್ನಿ ಅದ ಅಂಡ್ ದ ಟುಕ್ ಯು ನೋ ಅಂಡ್ ಲುಕಿಂಗ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಐ ಸ್ಟಿಲ್ ಡೋಂಟ್ ರಿಗ್ರೆಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ದ ಜಾಯ್ ದಟ್ ವಿ ಡಿರೈವ್ಡ್ ಯು ನೋ ಇನ್ ಪ್ಲೇಯಿಂಗ್ um i even today many asked me you won the test for india you, you, you i was one of the most prolific scorers at that time um arjuna what you out nimma doddu do sadhane andre i always say i'm i'm proud to be one of the pioneers who laid a solid foundation for the game on which the superstructure could be built ಉದಾಹರಣೆ ಹೇಳ್ತೀನಿ ಕೇಳಿ ನಾವು ಆಡುವಾಗ ಮಹಿಳೆಯರ ಆಟ ಇನ್ನೆರಡು ಶುರು ಆಯ್ತು ಅದು ಈ ನಡುವೆ ಯುನೋ ಇಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಫ್ರಿಟ್ ಅದ ವೇ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ದ ವಿ ವಿ ಇನ್ ಅಟ್ ದಿ ಇಂಟರ್ನ್ಯಾಷನಲ್ ಲೆವೆಲ್ ವಿ ಪ್ಲೇಡ್ ವೆಲ್ ವಿ ಹೆಲ್ಡ್ ಅವರ್ ಓನ್ ಗ್ರೌಂಡ್ ವಿ ನೆವರ್ ಸಕಮ್ಡ್ ಯುನೋ ಈಸಿಲಿ ಅದರಿಂದ ಏನಾಯ್ತು ಪೀಪಲ್ ಅಕ್ಸೆಪ್ಟೆಡ್ ವಿಮೆನ್ಸ್ ಕ್ರಿಕೆಟ್ maybe with a grudge but who cares uh, but uh, it could not uh, you anymore uh, no i mean even those days you know ye gain bidi i mean nam datanu bitta it a kaladalli now otherwise 
you can't take a step forward you know uh, to reach your goal if you uh, if you're too bothered by the criticisms um, and there were plenty but then it really didn't bother because the passion for the game was such that um, that helped us overcome every hurdle mm -hmm. that we faced and uh, nija helbe kundre um, i'm very happy that, as i said the founding father santarata founding mothers namdo <laughs> baby i i always say the the um, the credit for laying such a strong foundation on which women's cricket has grown now um, multifold is it goes to the credit of all those who played with me in the initial phases right. and because we did well ade onde karana ivattu adu nam mahila cricket tu jeevantavagide andre ade karana individual credit tagolakkinta i prefer to say collectively we all laid a solid foundation on which players like sindhu and all have emerged over to you sindhu yeah, so can i add one more thing on that shanta na yen helbeku antu andre i mean at that time television illa social media illa duddi illa yen illa but you guys did so well and brought it to the level it is right now and it's a it's a testament to your uh, you know hard working and all the team diana edils here bodo neevir bodo i think that's a testament i just want to uh, convey that to you absolutely thank you but that reminds me uh 1984 we were playing a test match uh, against australia invariably whenever we played at delhi we used to meet the prime minister at that time mm -hmm. it was mrs indira gandhi so mm -hmm. inge group photo pakka because i was a captain so i asked her inge photo notes inge i'll click martirvagle madam you are the, we have a lady prime minister and we don't even have telecast of our matches ma'am is that so must be <laughs> must be the equipments problem inge inge nortta idare suniye andro alli inda kade inda yaro tap anta attention ig banda next test match was telecast believe it or not so oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> i mean it was because of her greatness you That's know true. she uh, immediately recognized the need for it and um, perhaps because uh, it was almost a provocation you one lady prime minister agi women's cricket ik telecast illa andre hing madam idu ondide avaru ishte avaru helidu suniye andro alli yar inde idru yeno gottilla nange but nam next match ahmedabad bombay ladidvi test those were telecast i mean earlier it was only be the you know, highlights the capsule store so but those were telecast live adad mel bidi now when i went on to be uh, uh, the karnataka association office bearer and which was separate from ksa you know mm. in 2006 bcci took over the administration of women's cricket till till such time it was run by a different entity the women's cricket association of india and i of which i was a part and all we had the full telecast all matches do version used to do it now of course we are part of bcci so women's cricket benefits have grown uh, in multiples excellent the, the yeah it was a three test series as i noted in delhi lucknow and uh, ahmedabad ಅರುಳ್ ಮರಳು ಬಂದಿಲ್ಲೂ ಶಾಂತಾಂಟಿಸ್ಟಿಸ್ಟಿಸ್ಟಿಸ್ಟಿಸ್ಟಿಸ್ಟಿಸ್ಟಿಸ್ಟಿಸ್ಟಿಸ
Shanta had already laid up. I'm, I'm, I'm using Shanta, and I'm sure she had her own team of people yes. doing it for her. But um, she was the leader, of course. But she had laid this foundation so much that all we had to do was show up. No, God, isn't that good? I mean, there are there are going to be struggles at every generation, right? I mean, of course, the generation that she uh, had uh, struggles with, I'm, I'm not going to say I had the same struggles, but of course, we had our own struggles too to growing up. Basically, being stereotyped that you know girls can't play cricket, right? Yeah. But that only made us more stronger. It just made us want to go out there and perform, and also prove it to them that you know that we are good enough to be competing with everybody. And that is even till date. I, I can talk to you about what we face today as well on the field. So it's the same, but I think it only makes us stronger. It only makes us that want to go out there and prove yeah. us. It, it makes it makes sense when you say that. If when you started your cricket at nine, yep. that means Shanta and their team, yeah. they did so well that when you're able to start and practice and do, you know, that is so heartening. Yeah. Thank you very much again. I mean, I uh, I had to just um, reach out to, I, I, I lived in the same um, locality as Smita Hari Krishnan, who's uh -huh. a former uh -huh. India captain. So I lived in the same, she actually found me. I used to play with the kids outside, just I'm like India. The, not captain, Sindhu. Mm. Uh, she was not the captain? Never, no. Never? Oh, okay. All right. Uh, Smita Hare Krishna, and she mm -hmm. actually found me, and then she actually put me to Falcon Cricket Club. I think that's my first introduction to any kind of former cricket, um, any former cricket. So I think Shanta was the president. I don't know. I mean, she owns the club, by the way. So oh. I started my career at that time. You know, I mean, going back to Shanta, what I, what I mean to say is struggle and okay, she's an embodiment of struggle because our softball other when mm -hmm. no other uh, girls played uh, softball then she played ball badminton and there were a few girls playing ball badminton but she's a pioneer in not only cricket but probably pioneer in ball badminton also soft softball which is a big upcoming uh, sports at that time yeah right shanta yes that's true uh, <coughs> incidentally uh, we don't own clubs here sindhu we just work for it you know, in America, we don't own it. We, 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 Everything is privatized here anyway. Uh, yes, I was at West West. In fact, uh, big, uh, I didn't want to raise Falcons since you brought it up. We celebrated. Uh, that's the point. You see, you might have gone to USA and settled down, but you shouldn't forget your roots. I'm glad you mentioned Falcons because we celebrated the Golden Jubilee this 2021, nice. uh, we had a, a, a tournament where all most Indian players were called. We had uh, and live streaming and things like that. So uh, um, yes, I'm glad she mentioned Falcons because I, in my um, when I was talking, I didn't want to raise it, but since he brought it up, yeah. I thought it's pertinent to mention that we it's 50 years down the line, and we're still going strong. Yeah, it shows she hasn't forgotten her roots. That's a good thing. Yeah, I mean, okay. <laughs> thank you, Sindhu. Yeah. Good. Um, so, I mean, I think that kind of covered my, almost covered my next question, which was, you know, basically like, what, what was your inspiration? But, you know, you, you guys mentioned it already. So I will move into a few uh, direct questions to Shanta. Uh, and then uh, I'll let Vinay take over. Uh, and you know, talk to Sindhu with a few more uh, individual questions. So, Shanta, um, new, uh, you know, test debut 76 Almadari against West Indies, and then after three draws, the fourth test you won, right? Um, in, in Patna. So, Nanga, I, I just wanted to get into your, 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 your team mindset, or you know, what, what was going through, and how, how did you inspire? To you know, because re re recording the first win against West Indies, and yes, I mean, um, even men's team weren't you know winning all over uh, all the time. I got test win was 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 not that easy, and not that frequent as well. So it was few and far in between, Kanapa. Yeah. So please talk us through that that environment. Anyway, uh, you see, uh, women's cricket started in India in 1973. Hmm. In March, when most of us were unaware of it, in Pune, the first national championships was held with two and a half teams playing. Two and a half. 
Yeah, let me complete that. <laughs> Bombay, it was then Bombay, Maharashtra, and half of UT, UP team, because the promoter of Women's Cricket Association in India was from Lucknow. Mm. So the extra players of Maharashtra, they filled up the blanks for uh, okay. UP. Wow. So, you know, in, in effect, it was... I, I wouldn't call it the first national champ, but it is on record that it's the first national championship. And one of those players who filled up the, you know, uh, who played for UP because of want of players, went on to lead India. Nilima Barve became Nilima Joglekar. You know, mm. uh, in 85, she took over the captaincy from me. So, I mean, so things can go any from anywhere to anywhere. But... Second nationals was held in November. From two and a half team, it became 16 teams. 16 teams. 73. 73, yeah. And that's where we made our debut. We, uh, uh, first game, we, we played the losing finalists of the previous, it's Maharashtra, and beat them. We went on to the finals. Mm, um, I recall with pride that till I played, Invariably, we, we figured in the top teams. In fact, nine national championships we have been in the finals. My only regret is that Karnataka won the final in the final. You have to go to Korea. These players are held. You have to go to Korea. 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 Karnataka reached nine finals but didn't win any. No, subsequently they have reached once or okay. twice, yeah, I mean, no, yeah. we haven't won so far, no, oh, we oh, haven't oh. won, uh, won the night. Aga, 75 early Australia Banto, mm. India again. Um, then, uh, in fact, second test, the selector, Banbuto, his zone selector, he matched him, Adli Landre, and even selector could be Kuntidari and Tinandro. So, in Kutid there, two down, no, no. Oh, the hell there. Do or die match for me in Tode Al Nan. I top scored with 92. Second innings, I top scored. I got a wicket in the first innings. But when we are losing, you know, they had to get 117 runs. It was more a T20 match. Atharaj, too, um, uh, uh, it was so exciting. Then in the last over, they had to get five runs. And I got three wickets. Wow. And the match ended in a draw. They were nine down. And uh, they had to get two runs. So, you know, it, it was a thriller those days itself. Yeah. My point, the, in fact, New Zealand men, no, no, Poonali century over there, 119. Uh, and uh, subsequently, they said these are not recognized as um, both Australia and New Zealand. And what was amusing was, after the news, uh, West Indies test, I'll come back to that test. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we went to New Zealand on a tour, about 45 day tour. And we played a test there, almost the same level. I, I still don't know how, uh, how the Indian tests were not official, but what we played there. Fortunately, alone century, I wouldn't have been in the list of uh, century makers, if but for that. Uh, my, um, like, uh, you know, I, I went on to score a century in Dunedin in New Zealand. Otherwise, I, would, um, I wouldn't have figured in that list. Oh. West Indies Pandaka first test in Bengaluru. Correct. Correct. Chinnaswami Stadium in Adidvi. Alle six ala did though. In fact, Lala was, Lala Manat was, comment, no, he was the chairman of the selection committee. Oh, nice. Commentary in Porto, he was very angry with me. Adena get to normally uh, angry because uh, I played a, an attacking game to infuse some interest to uh, see if we can get a result. Our God, Seriaglila. Oh, you're playing for the gallery in Talandidro. Which is the point was um, he didn't want me to. Iwaga, one day T20 after a We had a solid start. 83 run opening partnership, opening pair. So, uh, if we do not force the pace, result per light was all three day games. Admogaskan fourth test was Patna, where which we won. 
It's a low-scoring thriller. Yeah. In fact, uh, I remember the last wicket, uh, I was fielding at slips. Yuliaro inge sweep marakogi, it lobbed to short fine. I ran. I, I took that catch and we won. Uh, more than the game itself, because we have played a lot of games like that, it's the reaction. We had 40,000 plus spectators wow. ticketing. You know, the, the people had bought tickets to come and watch. Wow. So, in, in immediately Patna. after that, huh? stadium was almost full. Barring one repair act, those were all ticketed. Those days, people, anywhere in the world, you sit in your drawing room and you can get to watch it. So, spectator interest has dwindled to some extent. Yeah. Uh, that's why innovations like T20, now we get 100 or T10, no, now we T5, uh, T1, now we get one on the map. Super, super over. Very super over. Very super over. That's what I'm saying. Super over competition. Ali, we were asked to go to a college, women's college, it was already scheduled, which was maybe a kilometer away. You know, the procession. Uh, from the stadium to the uh, that uh, a kilometer away took one and a half hours because you can imagine yeah. Jana full they lined up you know uh, I mean it it's a sight uh, worth remembering uh, even this yeah. day because that's the kind of love people showered on us uh, basically because we won. That is very nice. That, that, that's why I wanted to bring that up, you know, because it's it's, it's historic. I mean, uh, Madhule, I mean, yes, you can win games later on, but winning that first test, you know, just to show them that you can win. And, you know, uh, uh, especially, you know, our, our fortune that, you know, we are talking to the captain of that team. You know, so like I just thought we'll, we'll, uh, you know, we, I think that game Thank deserves. Thank you for taking me down. Yeah, absolutely. That game deserves a few minutes in this one episode. So, yes. Adike, Mayana and Konde. Ale, Neev Nordhange, and because you were in the first game as well as, like you said, you know, even before the first test, you played a few unofficial tests. And to compare to what's happening now, how, how do you... How do you feel about the the change and the progress the women's cricket has made over the decades? I think uh, after the initial euphoria from 75 to 78, Tumbaito, mm. then there was a lull. Mm. See, in my career, let me tell you, I never played international cricket from 77 to 82. So to 84, 82 World Cup, uh, 84, then 86 to 91. That means when you are in your prime, 11 years has gone down the drain. So yeah. but then we don't, that's life. You know, you, you win some, you lose some. <laughs> but uh, 91, women's cricket stabilized in India. You know, uh, uh, with the advent of uh, Anuradha, uh, Dattanta, she was the secretary, and later on, uh, Shubangi Kulkani took over. You know, uh, she was a secretary. So it was the Tumba Ne Chanagi stabilized it to Akal Dali. In 2006, BCCI decided to start their own women's cricket. So the, it was just a smooth transition. Uh, the players from here to there, of course, we were all party to that decision mm. but i'm i'm happy uh, things are going the way it is but if you ask me whether it could have been better definitely it could have been better yeah, there are a lot of issues i still um speak out in our apex council meeting and things like that but then nah. hmm, i'm sure uh, um even in usa or uk anywhere if you see women's mm. sports generally it's a secondary one only compared yeah. to the male sports. Yeah. yeah. Let, let, let me take let me take uh, Sindhu. Let me introduce her and yes. let when I talk, 
and when whatever the time we have we can come back and revisit uh, the things yes. that we have left over okay yeah, yeah. can we do that thank yeah. you uh, let me introduce sindhu shriharsha sindhu is an american cricketer and captain of the united states cricket team sindhu has played cricket since the age of 9 she has represented india a and india under 21 teams in november 2017 she was a part of the american squad played 2020 matches against pakistan following their west indies tour in may 2019 she named, she was named the captain of the united states she made the debut for united states against canada sindhu finished with the leading scorer in the three match series in august of 2019 she was named the captain of america in the icc world cup 2020 tournament in scotland she has a few more accomplishments i would rather have when i talk to her about her thing and then we'll go from there after that thank you when i want to talk to sindhu so i think what makes your journey so unique from so many other players is that you've played in two different countries now you grew up playing in india now you're playing in the us so can you just really quickly talk about that journey of you know coming you know leaving cricket in india coming here what you know what prompted the decision did you already know you wanted to continue playing here or did you kind of have like a a second life if you may like what was that journey like in that transition can you just talk us through that yeah sure uh, i actually had quit cricket in india so 2011 was my last season uh, in india and i took a cu- couple of years of break um, working in the corporate world i wanted to see a life outside of uh, cricket so and then i got married relocated here i did not carry my cricket kit or anything <laughs> when i moved over to us i didn't think cricket was in me anymore to play but i think after moving here um, of course like any other moving year i was on h4 visa which doesn't allow me to work here and i had to find something to play uh, something to keep me occupied with and i thought okay why not just play cricket for fun and i just started playing with the club games and that's how my second innings of cricket started so i didn't uh, plan this it just um, maybe just kind of it happened to me and i guess you know cricket was always there so i guess when i moved over here it just you know kind of happened. so you had a better second innings than the first innings huh um i would say so in, in some <laughs> way definitely a second uh, it was a better second innings maybe because i was a little more matured i didn't think that this was the only um, that this was my life and anyway, this was the own cricket was my life anymore it was just a part of it kind of yeah. started off as a hobby but now it's again it's a, it's a priority in life but it's not the only priority mm-hmm. because i have a full time job i have a and child. i have a i have a child and i play cricket which is full time too so it kind of um i feel i'm a little more mature of course uh, than what i used to play in, uh, in india so definitely i said i'm better off like now playing cricket than what so I yeah you yeah, kind of understood the uh, the, the, yeah. the sports much better in a way Thanks. exactly and and that's what i keep telling the youngsters that who play with me now i mean um, give everything that you got to give on the field and when you come back just kind of like Forget it. Sw- switch off completely mm-hmm. which i don't think i had enough resources at that time to understand this better but of course now i don't have a choice i have to switch off because when i come back home it's definitely not about cricket so i think that's um life would set us thought me that but i guess you know that is what we want to keep in keep telling the interest and also being in this country there is a tremendous change being in india playing cricket with a family is different from playing in america with a family it's a completely different role you have in and out of the house and cricket and everything else oh right? yeah definitely i think the support system that we get in india we don't get it here right when you right. come back home it's just you and your husband Correct. and having to take care of everything that's happening but the support system in india is obviously better I felt that when my mom was here or my in-laws would come and visit us all I had to do was get up and get things ready and go and play and come back home and everything would still be the same there would be food on the table <laughs> I didn't have to worry about it I have to think about putting food on the table with literally meaning that I have to put food on the table <laughs> so um definitely the support system is better in India when I I've, I've enjoyed when my mom or my in-laws are here to take care of us um definitely gives me better time to focus on uh, cricket or my career in kind terms of professional life as well can you can you kind of highlight a little bit the difference because you've played in both the countries the difference in you know cricket in general maybe it's the setup the system maybe it's like the mentality of how they approach the sport like what what have you seen in your observations the difference between cricket in india versus cricket here 
Well, uh, cricket in India is, I should say that at least there is a domestic structure that's already been developed. There is an infrastructure that is being followed for many years now. And this is this year was the first time ever we've had a domestic pathway for women okay. in the USA. So it's taken us so many years to develop this. I have been here playing for the US for close to five or six years now. And this is the first time we've had a domestic pathway. India, it's already there. The structure is there. They're trying to improve it, but we are trying to form the structure here. So like uh, Shanta was saying that they were the pioneers there, like we are being the pioneers here in this, in this country to set up those structures. So it's, it's taken us so long to create one domestic pathway. So this is the first time ever women crickets, we've had a pathway for under 19 and also women's, I mean, senior team. So I think it's a start. Uh, definitely, I would say we are a few years behind where uh, India was a few a few decades earlier where they were. This is where we are now. Mm -hmm. It's going to take us a little more longer to get there. But I feel like the generation today, the girls are a lot more fearless in terms of how cricket is different in cricket itself. I have to talk about they are a lot more fearless than what uh, we were when uh, growing up. And I think we are picking up that at this age, trying to be more fearless on the field. And mm -hmm. it kind of goes um, outside of cricket as well and their life. I think it's just this generation, the kind of exposure they have, they're definitely better. Every generation, you know, people get better and they get you know, the same way. I feel like they're just more fearless now. Definitely. I think, you know, a lot of people bring this up and, you know, every, I think, especially people born and raised here, and also people that kind of see this country from the outside, they always ask the, the age old question of, you know, how, how can the USA become more competitive in cricket, uh, you know, going forward? I think you hit on one of the main points, which is having some sort of domestic circuit for, you know, the, the youth to kind of grow up in and, and kind of, you know, advance in. Uh, you, maybe you can highlight that more, or if you have other things in mind that you can bring up to kind of advance US cricket, what would you say? Well, it is still known as an expat uh, kind of a sport, mm -hmm. right? Because yeah, right. if you see the majority of the people think, whether it's men's or cricket or women's, uh, it's still um, mm -hmm. people from different countries coming over here, move for whatever reason it is, and then start it off. Now we're having um, USA citizens as such, but still origin of India, origin of the who are first born here, they are American citizens. Right. But still, their origin is still from yeah. India. They've started playing because their parents like it or their brothers started playing. But I think what can take USA to the next level is actually introducing this to the grassroots level. It should go to the schools. You should have uh, Americans start picking it up at the Correct. school levels, try and bring it to the uni university levels and then build it on from there. It's, gonna, it's not going to happen overnight. It's, it's definitely going to take them a few years to build that up. And there is a start, I think the USA Cricket Administration, which was elected back, uh, you know, we were suspended for a few years and we, which was elected back about a couple of years, I should say 2018. Mm -hmm. uh, 2018. Um, of course, um, 2020 has been a year where everybody has faced it. So it, it did pull us back a couple of years, but that does not take away the work they've put in for the past couple of years. They've started, you know, well, trying to put in uh, cricket into the grassroots levels. Um, Bringing the numbers up, um, we, well, I should say we didn't even have 40 or 50 girls playing around the nation, but today we, because of the domestic structure, we have close to 200 to 250 people mm -hmm. across, like across the nation playing and we have teams that can come and play the intra-regionals or the regionals. So that is a start trying to pull in the numbers. Talent will come, but I think just pulling in the numbers to the grassroots levels, that is what will get us up. Yeah, no, I completely agree with you. I think what's an interesting observation is that cricket is one of the only sports in the U.S. that doesn't really have like a collegiate level or even school level, you know, uh, like official you know, organization that, you know, that bridges between the professional level and maybe just kids just playing for fun. And so I know there's been efforts that, you know, they're they're trying to, to, to advance that and bring that forward and kind of connect the two. And I think you're absolutely right in that. Um, having that kind of bridge helps, you know, the, the sport grow and kind of hopefully become more ubiquitous. Yeah, yeah. well, and that, that's, that's the thing well. that we try talking to the USA board is how do we retain these players, right? I mean, you, you, they're playing at the school level. How do we retain them at universities? Only by getting them scholarship. Right. Otherwise, mm -hmm. there is no way to retain these players to try and get them to play the next level. I just want to quickly touch on that. Obviously, money is everything. Yeah. Okay, let's face it. 
Yeah. Is there anything like any commitment to any, any corporations towards uh, you know, ramping up cricket uh, the way? Uh, because without money, without there's no participation. Because That's true. You know, everybody has to have like if they want to play for the college, they have to have some kind of a and financial reasons. Is there anything that's happening underground that we don't know? And uh, is there anything that you guys are suggesting playing cricket? You can say from 50 to 250, it's a, it's a large number, but yeah. 250 is still not good. Oh, yeah. So it have to be thousands. So mm-hmm. anything that you can sh- sh- you know, share with us that what, what's being done? Yeah, uh, definitely sponsors is something that yeah. USA Cricket is trying to go and you know get more sponsors, get more money into the thing. And they can only build this with money in hand. Like That's they just, mm-hmm. uh, we're not there yet that we've had enough exposure, enough uh, sponsors to get, give us that money. I do know that there's going to be a few announcements coming in a couple of weeks, uh, which I'm not allowed to say much no, about. Of course not, uh, of course. Which I'm not, but um, we are definitely getting a lot of traction. That MLC that's been going on, the major cricket league, uh, the minor cricket league, and we just had Toyota and Sling uh, actually um, sponsoring oh, Sling. us. That's good. That's sponsoring good. us, and they will be uh, doing all of the streaming as well. Below cricket doing the streaming. So there is a little bit of traction. Um, definitely, people are getting uh, coming forward to give us a little more money, giving us the sponsors. You will see that announcement come in a couple of weeks, which I'm, Very good. Which I'm not allowed to say much uh, about. I wanted to add that on that. Actually, the USA cricket, you know, uh, I think COVID also kind of uh, postponed the plans because it was supposed to be last year, like, you know, Sindhu said, major league, minor league cricket, and, you know, Sling and Velo TV, and also there's some major uh, investments from corporations, including huge uh, facility being built in Seattle under Satya Nadella's... Uh, yeah, Satya Nadella, yes, I, I, I read that. So Microsoft is going big on that. So yeah, USA Cricket is is getting better. Uh, and you know, because I can I can speak to that as well because I'm an official umpire in USA Cricket now uh, for Southern California. So Nano, and also to the previous question, Nano, are there, that, that's why I put that question that in all the matches we see, so far in this in this whole season i have met one australian and one british citizen and then it's all indians pakistanis bangladeshis caribbean so i think that's why we wanted to see like how to is the, you know what kind of plans there would be to to draw in net you know like americans and not just american citizens like my kids yes my kids my daughters are already into cricket now the one the last week we went to yellowstone park and because I said we are going to the park and we it was a road trip, my daughter packed her cricket bat and ball in, in the car. So we actually ended up playing cricket in Yellowstone Park as well. Yeah, I, I saw the picture you posted at that. Yeah, yeah. And a six-year-old daughter, she's, she's into cricket already. So yeah, yeah but yeah, uh, USA Cricket is doing much better than it was a couple of years ago. And of course, you know, Sindhu is right in the middle of it. And yeah. yeah. One, one last question, Shindu. Yeah. Obviously, you're saying, you know, the corporations have to get involved because that's where the money is, and I know that. But from a standpoint of other things, spreading the word around, whatever you want, to, however you want to call it, I don't know what the word is. Uh, what can Somus of the industry, um, Kashyap's of the industry, Virais of the industry, common man, like we all are interested in cricket, we follow a lot of cricket. What can we, as not as an individual, can, we, can, we can do something to promote it that way. There are more people watching, there are more people uh, playing at the end of the day because the cricket will not flourish because we are getting older. We want the teenagers to come and play and that's where the... We have to go to remote areas because uh-huh. right now cricket is in USA. We have hubs. We have California hub, Florida hub and New York hub and Houston hub. Where's the other? We have so much more to explore. We have so much. We have to go to remote areas, try and play some exhibition games try and get the involved, the community involved and try and build this thing. It can happen with just one organization. It needs to be a community uh, based and community has to come together to build this up. The hubs are already there. Yeah. We cannot, uh, what more can you do in hubs? We've already yeah. built that up uh, to a level that it's already now, uh, it's almost there, right? right? Mm-hmm. Now we have to go to remote areas to try and build it up from there. So I've always said we have to, you know, put ourselves in the truck and keep going around. And <laughs> I know it means that, you know, we have to take some days off, but days off, it, yeah. yeah, but that's that's okay. You're doing fog cricket. So yeah. I, I've always said like, just like, let's do a road trip, go to remote areas and play cricket and try and involve the community there and spread the word. 
ego for example um, i'm just saying this is a very small thing that we are doing not too many people are watching either hoysala balavana what we are doing is me kashyap and vinay are doing is to every week we're talking about it i um, mean we can promote that because it's it's already being you know recorded and we're putting it in youtube some of the there are some followers that they do so is there anything that we can do to promote your cause when we talk on that forum and if somebody is listening they can pick it up and go from there amu just sorry to interrupt uh, um, just uh, okay. my take on this because a couple of months back uh -huh. i was on a talk show it, it was a live show uh um, Boston in it was based on um, the, uh, a former cricketer of Karnataka she's based there so she had arranged a lot of this USA cricket people were involved in that a um, couple of things unless the locals start playing they see only the expats are playing most mostly Correct. unless the locals start it it, it, it won't really uh, um, uh, get yeah. popularities too you have to uh, there are a lot of factions there um, uh, in in usa cricket so unless they unify and act in tandem you know uh, it, this it's not really going to help because uh, i know houston and a lot of these domestic cricket is going on um, quite a few of our karnataka cricketers are settled there sindhu uh, had disappeared i had lost touch but then uh, um Mira Iyer who played for Karnataka she is in Boston there's um, Supriya Desai she is in Carolina so there are quite a few cricketers there and they are doing their bit to popularize the game but my suggestion for all of you would be to make sure the locals get into it Correct. that's the only way you can um, spread it you know it could be a, a a a popular sport only if the locals play and not just the expats and then organization you need to be one you can't have splinter groups uh, pulling in different directions yeah you know you know i mean you're right uh, local cricket cricket agala yav sports no agala we have to have uh, locals in more than as i said um, obviously uh, shanta sindhu is not going away you didn't see her for 10 years she's not going to go away she's not going to escape any one of us anymore anyway so that's good so we'll do that but uh, last but not the least Uh, in the interest of time we have to end this and what i'm going to do is to thank shanta for her time and her support and everything else and sindhu for thank for coming participating in it and we really do thank you navika thanks you and uh, myself kashyap and vinay thank you for uh, taking time and shanta i know it's a late in the night for you and thank you very much and after this i will, I will have kashyap send you the clip of it and you can review that and we'll talk more about it and if there's an opportunity for us to get you back and do more of these things we would love to do that and since you and sindhu are there i'm going local i to on the bengaluru i to it gives us a little bit more latitude for what we can possibly do so if you can uh, you know help us in uh, integrating sindhu you and all of us together we would love to do that so we'll have more of this uh, thank you navika thank you everybody for taking your time to help us out and I'd last word like shanta navika somu all of you for the opportunity uh, mm -hmm. more so in in uh, uh, enabling us to reconnect sindhu and me yeah. thanks Thank a lot you. god Thank bless you. bye yeah. sindhu yeah. last word yeah um, definitely an honor to sit and and I'll share the stage with all of you all definitely with shanta um, it's been what 10 years shanta and i'm glad to see you again uh, hoping to talk to you more uh, and keep in touch um definitely it's been an honor would love to come back and do more if you we will do that yeah. we love that um, and it's been a lovely one hour that we've spent so thank far you. talking about cricket <laughs> thank you very much thank you all thank you kashyap thank you everybody and uh, we have to say goodbye and uh, just to remind that uh, we have got another one of this session with uh, um sujit somsundar and venkesh prasad in the coming days and we're going to record that and that's going to put as well with this so looking forward to talking to them as well and thank you again everybody thank you thank, thank you everyone bye thanks shanta oh. it was nice seeing you after a long time bye bye and uh, some our number kalsi nang simul sin